What's up, ball sniffers? Welcome back to the podcast. This is um, episode 68, I believe. So I know it's been a minute, but we're back. We're better. And I got a good one for you guys, man. This um, this one was done with William Holmes. Um, we had last year, you know, when things were normal, we were, we had kind of went to the same parties and shit. So that's how I met this guy. And then recently I, well, I recorded this one probably like two weeks ago. So around that time I was like, who wants to be on the snake pit? And he hit me up and said he did. And I'll be honest with you guys. I looked at his bio and it said ACAV and, and, um, and I, I thought it'd be interesting to have him on. I really thought that it was going to be a lot more confrontational and a lot more like of almost like a debate style. I thought it really was. But no, man, we had a great one. We had a great conversation. We really like kind of talked about it a little bit, but we really talked about death and psychedelics and spirituality and religion a lot more this podcast. And it was really, really, it was really, it was a really good time to hear what he had to say and his, you know, his thoughts and all that shit about it. And I, and I enjoyed it, man. And I, and I'm glad we did it. And it was a good one. And, you know, we do talk about some serious shit like suicide and, and, and um, as tough as, as it is to talk about and listen to it, you know, like my mom said, it needs to be talked about. It needs to be said and... We touched on that, and we touched on a lot of things, and uh, I'm glad we did it. William, if you're listening, you have a friend in me, man. It was a good one. Um, I think you'll be seeing more of him throughout these videos on YouTube and shit, because we're going to do, like, a bro beers and all that. We talk about it. It was a good time. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys listen to all of it. It was fun. And uh, thank you, William. Thank you for all y'all who are listening. You can... <laughs> Motherfucker, you can hear my sister... You hear my sister yelling. Um, that's the joys of living at home with your parents. But um, yeah, you can support the podcast, Patreon, the podcast through YouTube, like and subscribe. You know, um, if you follow me on, if you're subscribed, to, uh, if you would please subscribe to me on Spotify, and subscribe to me on Pod, um, Apple Podcasts if you have the app, and leave a review. I really want to know. You guys' thoughts on this podcast? I do. Um, you can hit me up on the website. I want to know your thoughts about that. You should leave a comment on your thoughts about this on YouTube. Um, you know, with this episode, the the camera angle was a little fucked up on my part, and I'm sorry. But you know, I think I I I don't I don't I could do better, but I'm not too worried about production. Maybe I should. But that's getting better. I'm more worried about the conversation and more worried about the people I have on, if we're being honest. So, you know, the camera angle on me was a little fucked up. And then these next few podcasts, you'll see how fucked up everything is because I try to fuck around and change shit up, but it just didn't work. So I'm sorry about that. You know, if anything, just listen. Don't watch. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, subscribe to the Patreon. It's a dollar. Cooking show will be out pretty soon. Start putting more content out. And other than that, I'm I'm thankful for everything. I'm thankful for life and thankful for this podcast, man. It's a fucking blast doing it. I'm about to do one tonight. So Hope you guys enjoy. We'll um we'll talk to y'all next time. And here you go. Three, two, one. What's up guys? Welcome back to the snake pit, man. I'm here with man, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, William. <laughs> Yeah, some reason it just doesn't. Let me turn you up a little bit. All right. <clears throat> right now I can hear you a little bit better. William, man, <laughs> you doing all right. all right? Oh, yeah, man. Just went to the fair. <laughs> <laughs> How was that, by the way? Way too expensive. We rode two rides. We rode the, uh, the Zero G one, which is the one that like throws you up against the wall. And that one was a ton of fun. Then uh, we went on one of those... <sighs> I forgot what they're called, but it's got like the, it's got like that long arm and there's like two rotating carts on it. And we went on that and I, uh, the first pass through, we were like going down. I like tried to scream because I was terrified and nothing came out and I was like, it's okay, they got safety checks on this. 
<laughs> man, oh man, I think about that. I guess. Is there any regulation at the fair? I hope so. I mean, at the very least, they don't want to get sued, right? Yeah. Was there a lot of people? It was fucking packed, dude. We wear our mask, like, the entire time. And, I mean, the fair's gross on, like, a good day, but going out there during the middle of the pandemic probably wasn't my best decision. Yeah, I was thinking of... um, Yeah, exactly. My point was, like, no disrespect, but, but the main crowd is... It's it's pretty gross oh, yeah, <laughs> to be yes. good with, you know? Dude, nobody was wearing a mask. Like, they had signs up all over the place. And it was like, you gotta wear your mask, you gotta wear your mask. And, like, me and her were wearing our mask, like, on the rides. But everybody just, like, kept taking theirs off. Was like, no, I, I, I was just, like... So, with my job, you know, my boss, he's pretty plain Jane. So we eat at Taco Villa every fucking day, the same one. Um... And it was like, so I, you know, you, you kind of, if you want to be, you're observant. And I just noticed, like, literally this week, nobody gives a fuck about the masks anymore. Dude, especially, nobody. especially not here. Like, dude. Yeah, Lennox, here. Lennox fucking terrible, especially with tech, because we're, not only are we, like, a small conservative town, we've also got a college that, like, caters to all the smaller, more conservative towns all around us. Like, yeah. You ever been out to Hale Center? You go into Lowe's and people don't know you. They're like, what the fuck's this guy doing here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it was like, it was literally like a change overnight. Cause like, like even my boss was like, I wore, I didn't wear a mask to Walmart and they didn't say nothing. So I'm done wearing them. And I'm just like, you know, and again, they have the fucking signs. Yeah, I mean, like, and just, I went, I, I, I will, I won't lie to you. I went to the, I went to Chances Are. You've ever been there? I haven't been to Chances Are. I mean, I turned 21 in the big middle of the, like, oh, that's nice. quarantine hit. Yeah, well, it's like a club. Well, it's supposed to be a club, but okay. I guess they're not supposed to be open. Somehow they're open, whatever. It's not my business how they remained open, but it was it was horrible. I walked in, and I was like, nope. And I, walked, I went to the restroom, walked right out. It was, <laughs> it was, it was... I was, I'm shocked. Like, I think this week we're just done. We're, like, Lovick's just done with everything. Like, fuck it. No mask, no six feet, none of that shit, man. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> my, uh, my roommate's girlfriend works at JMB, and she's already had, like, th- they're all, uh, she's got a bunch of coworkers that are immunocompromised, and she's got, like, she's had three coworkers already who have had to miss because they've gotten COVID. God damn. And it's just, it's ridiculous. It is. It's stupid. But whatever. Are you, are you, would you say you're pretty healthy? Yeah. yeah. I mean, for, you know, smoking a pack a day, I feel like I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's, like, it's hard for, I think it's hard for us because, like, I think we'll be all right if we get it. Yeah. But you don't want to be selfish and you don't want to be, like, inconsiderate. Yeah, exactly. At the same time, you know, I see my grandpa every fucking yeah. day, week versus the Sunday. And he's like, oh, come give me a hug, William. And I'm like... I don't know where I've been, Yogi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My 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 great grandma, she's she's like in her seventies. She stayed with us last night, mm-hmm. and I just don't think she understands. Like, I I can't. I'm gonna keep my distance from you because I don't want to be mean, but just I don't want that on my conscience. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, like at a certain point, like it's nicer to keep that distance. Like that's the weird thing about being nice is that sometimes. You do have to be cruel to be kind, you know? Yeah. You gotta be a dick occasionally to help people achieve their best selves. What a fucking time. Well, yeah. Uh, did you eat out there at the fair? No. No? No. I mean, we, we talked about stopping at McDonald's on the way over here, because it was gonna be cheaper and there was gonna be less chance of cardiac arrest. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know, sometimes you just gotta live a little bit. Fuck it. Especially this this year. I know. I always feel so selfish. Like, the only thing you can do without feeling guilty anymore is, like, go to parks. So I've been going to parks a ton. Like, yeah. I've gotten into camping recently. and that's... Yeah, You're going this weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you going? Uh, we're going up to Caprock Canyon. Okay. We want to hit Paladero, but, like, Paladero's booked for months. Like, everybody wants to go to Paladero. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, me and my girlfriend tried to go the early start of pandemic. And it it was real odd to me that you had to reserve a spot. Oh, yeah. I didn't get that. 
I mean, like, I got into camping during the pandemic, so yeah. I like, can't say anything, but it seems like reserving spots has, like, been the thing, just so you don't have people, like, setting up shop in the middle of the wood. Oh, it's always been? It seems like, like, they've already, when I was setting up for Caprock Canyon, it seemed like they already had... Well, no, it wasn't even a camp, actually. It was just a hike. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, it was just a hike, so I'm like... I get it, like, you like, I guess everybody kind of wants to be outdoorsy right now, you know what I mean? No disrespect. Yeah, yeah. But, like, how can you limit us? Like, let's outdoors. Like, if I'm going to stay six feet no matter what if I see some stranger hiking, you know? Oh, dude, did you hear... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sidetrack, did you hear that Trump's, like, trying to, like, roll back national parks? Like, we're not even going to be allowed to walk around here in a couple of years. Uh, for, for instance, he's trying to uh, greenlight mining uranium in the Grand Canyon. Oh, Jesus Christ. And there's so many indigenous people that live down there. It's like, what are you doing, man? That's been the whole presidency has. <laughs> you know, man, speaking of that, I've heard, like, you know, we think we're bad. Like, I heard there's, like, a lot of illegal mining in Mexico. I just heard about it. Mm-hmm. Just think about that. Like, there's no regulation over there. Or in other countries, man, fuck, you know. In other countries who don't give a fuck, like... China or Russia, they're just mining everywhere, man. It's crazy. It's sad. Exactly. I mean, people are like, the. I've got some friends now, so listen to some talking heads who are like hard right wing and like super. The market will decide. But I think the biggest indicator that the market won't decide is child labor laws. <laughs> like, we had to go sending kids down mine shafts is bad. Like, <laughs> man, 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 it's a. How you feel about today, man? How you feeling about the world? Oh, well, okay, no, the country. Let's just say the country. Let's start there. Oh, shit. How am I feeling <laughs> about the country? Dude, I am really nervous about the election. I don't know if you caught the debate, but I got pit- caught bits and pieces of it, and it was ridiculous. I didn't because I knew it was going to be ridiculous. I, 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 everything people told me about it, I kind of was like, What'd you expect? <laughs> Dude, Trump was like, Trump said insulin was like water. He's like, it's like water. He's like, oh, it's not. <laughs> no, you know, if I, uh, I don't know. If I had to say something about all that, it's just like, because I did see this guy post on Instagram about it, which I really liked, and I have to say it to you guys. It's just like, you know what, man, the election's the election. Let's focus on our community. Yeah. Let's no. focus on our local level. Dude. You know, you know what I mean? That's what I say. One thing I've really enjoyed about the pandemic p- <laughs> pandemic is it seems like communities have really rallied around themselves. Yeah. You know? I feel like, that. Uh, I feel like there's a larger sense of community places, especially like in Lubbock, you know? And I, I don't know. Growing up, I was like, oh man, Lubbock's a shithole. I want to get yeah. out of here. You know, there's nothing to do here. And then I graduated high school and I actually started making friends and I'm like, there's a music scene, there's like an art scene, there's cool people here. And yeah, just, that's what I've gathered from doing this, is like, it's a little hidden, it is, it's kind of in its own little yeah, yeah, yeah. bubbles, but if you go looking for it a little bit, it doesn't take that much, you'll find cool shit here. Oh yeah. And you'll find your own community. Oh man, I saw, yeah. a, I saw a fox out at May Simmons the other day, it was like massive. <laughs> really? Me and my friend were just like, she she was wanting to hang out, she's been having boyfriend troubles, and I was like, yeah, man, come over, and I was like, and then she got to my apartment, I'm like, I don't want to be here, you want to go to Mae Simmons? And we were like, just hiking around there, and we found this, like, massive field, right, like, twice the size of your garage, and it was just full of morning glories, like, these purple and pink flowers poking out of this uh, green underbrush. And we left there, and then there was, like, a fox trotting along, and we're like, oh, we're gonna follow him. And so I followed him for a little bit, just, you know, seeing him poke out between from the bush every so often. That, that was really cool. Like, I was not expecting to see a fox in a public park. How, what time of day was it? It was, uh, it was in the morning. I think oh. it was like, I think it was like 9, 10, maybe 10, 11, somewhere in that area. Uh, I don't know. I've been getting up early. It's just, <laughs> I got to get up for at like 7 for work. And now on the weekend, my body's like... All right, seven fifteen. You slept in. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't have to work tomorrow. I usually work on Fridays, but tomorrow I don't. Oh. And it's like there's no sleep again. My dog wakes me up at six fifty. Like he has his eternal clock, and I won't be able to go back to bed. So it's whatever. Oh man, this morning yeah. uh, her kitten woke me up. 
we got a couple of kittens from my parents and uh woke up in the middle or i woke up at like 6 15 and the cat was just kneading on my back like while my alarm was going off and i'm like it's fine and hit snooze and then she just went back to kneading on my back and i was like all right i'm getting up you're right yeah yes. my girlfriend has cat two cats too and uh she doesn't understand like i don't want to stay with you sometimes because those fucking cats are like that like they're just meow and meow meow in the morning like you know Dude, uh, <laughs> fuck that i hate it I've read on Reddit or somewhere, like, if you want to make a routine and you've got a cat, just give your cat a treat right before you, you do whatever you do. Because you might not remember, but your cat will okay. remember that you give it a treat and it's not going to let you forget it. No, yeah, that's good and all, like, in the morning, but then, like, on occasions like this when you, uh... Switching the wine. Oh, okay. You want to switch? <laughs> no, let's take some, uh, let's take a shot, though. We can do that. Oh, hell yeah. Buffalo Trace, shout out to them. Please sponsor the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I have wine yesterday. What kind of wine do you like? Uh, I really like like dry cabs. It's what my mom was into, and uh, I hold a lot of respect for my parents' opinion. And they're like, dry wines are the best wines. And I'm like, okay, dry wines are the best wines. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> On camera, oops. Oof. But what was I saying? No, oh, to um, see if you can get a brand sponsorship. Also, yeah. uh, Robert Mandavi. That's a good wine. It's my favorite. Uh, they've also got a bourbon barrel, which is even better. It's like drinking a steak. <laughs> Cabernet. I don't want. I don't want to fucking uh, try to pronounce those words. You look like an idiot. Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet. There we go. Oh, no, I was gonna say. Um, I usually like a sweet red. A sweet red. But my girlfriend, dumbass, sorry, uh, <laughs> she bought a, a, a dry red. Yeah. And it, it was all right. This one's, this one's super dry. Yeah. But it's honestly my favorite, like, I don't know. I, uh, it was what my parents were drinking, and then somebody I was dating was like, this is my favorite wine, so we would get it regularly, and I just, I don't know, I fell in love with it. Is it expensive? No disrespect. No, it's like $10 a bottle. Okay, that's, that's, that's how much the one we had yesterday. So I was, I was making dinner for my family. I always make it on Tuesdays, but to yesterday I made it on Wednesday. And she called me all frantic asking, like, should I get three or how many should I get? I thought she was talking about rice packets. So I was like, get three. And she bought three bottles of wine. So now, <laughs> I, have, so now I have three bottles of wine. that I, Well, we finished one yesterday. One was a dry red. I think the other one is a sweet red, and I don't know what the other one is, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I, what I did like about the dry red is like with the sweet red like I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about let me just say that right now <laughs> the sweet red you know you, you drink too much it's like ugh but you don't have you know it's too sweet it's yeah, too yeah, like, yeah. ugh but the dry it never was too sweet but it still had the sweetness if that Dude, makes sense I'm not gonna say you'll never get a hangover you're less likely to get a hangover drinking straight liquor because like what gives you a hangover is a combination of dehydration the yeast and then sugar oh, oh yeah uh, <laughs> I don't actually, know. I don't think the yeast would do anything because you'd get sick eating a bunch of bread, too. No, there's some. I was watching Moonshiners, but yeah. <laughs> well, let me just be the first to say I haven't had a hangover in a while. I don't know if that's a good thing, but. Maybe but just, liquor. Liquor is a different story. Maybe you just learned your, uh, just learned your lesson. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like such an alcoholic because, like, none of my friends drink, you know? It's not to say that they're, like, not into mind-altering substances because they definitely are. It's just, like, alcohol. Okay, so we'll get into that in a minute. But, yeah, so you're a drinker? Uh, I drink more than my friends. I wouldn't really call myself a drinker. Like, I like drinking socially. But if I'm, like, by myself, I'm like, I'll have a beer. And then it'll take me two hours to drink. And I'm like, why'd I do that? Oh, okay. I was going to say, because I do a... Well, I'm trying to do the the beer the bro beers, where we where I drink beer with with the with the guest, mm -hmm. and we just discuss. But well, like, I use it as practice, to be honest. Like uh, I try to like describe what it tastes like, how it makes me feel. Like it just being in detail, vocally. I guess I don't know. I don't know. Does that make sense? Because like as a pod, like as me trying to do this, I want to be as as the best of a speaker as I can. And I figured, fuck it, we'll drink beer or liquor. 
or wine and we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll help me explain it to the guests how it makes me feel. So if you want to do it, we can. Oh, no, I'd be super down for that. I actually, uh, I worked as a bartender. Okay, at, even better. Uh, market or at United for a little bit. And the thing is, is like, I call myself a bartender, but we didn't serve any liquor. Like it was all. Uh, the one on 98th? It was actually the one on 4th in Milwaukee. It was the first one to get a bar in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it was all like craft beers and like specialty wines. And like, I, uh, I remember because I wasn't 21 when I started over there because, you know, it was just beer and wine. So I just had a <laughs> TABC. So I'd be like, Kirsty, I need you. Kirsty's my sister, I should establish. But I was like, I need you to buy me this, this, and this so I can describe it to the customers. Uh-huh. Like, I got super into beers and wine, beer and wine for a couple of months. And then, you know, now like, Nobody even parties anymore, so I can't even like shoot the shit. I'm like, this Robert Lindavi Private Select is like a real uh, smooth, dry red wine. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be that guy, but the bro beers is a good excuse to be that guy. Yeah, and it just it just it helps me just describe what I'm feeling or describe things. Be more um, what's the word? I don't even know. I'm not even. No, word? like um. Whatever, I don't even, I'm, I'm a little buzzed now, that fucking hurts even better. <laughs> just, just, yeah, more descriptive, more elaborate, more, um, shit, there's a word for it. Whatever, who cares? But yeah, so if you want to do it, we can do it. No, I'd be down. Uh, do you have a favorite beer right now? No, because I just drink Keystone or Natural Light. Nah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm cheap with it, man. No, I understand that. Uh, have you had... Uh, <laughs> My voice is cracking. Of course, when it's being recorded, it's that's when bit, it decides to crack. Nah, I'm not uh, a bitch. You go ahead and pour me one. There you go. There you go. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. You were going to ask me if I had something. Oh, yeah. Have you had any of the uh, the Oktoberfest that are out recently? Like, they always come out in the September, and they're always gone by October, despite the fact that they're called Oktoberfest. They're, like, dark. They, uh, they taste kind of like spice, but I enjoy them. She likes them. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not much of a... I, if I had to be picky about it, I don't really like dark beer. Yeah? I don't know. Um, or liquor. <laughs> I had to sw- chug that twice if you heard it. Dude, my parents... Uh, my parents got me into liquor for, from an early age. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't really start drinking in earnest until after I was like 18. But I remember growing up, my parents would be like, "This is a really good whiskey, William. You should, you should sip and savor it." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, my dad's like that. Like, I never understood it. Like, there's, there's just certain alcohols you, you're supposed to not just do what you just did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Oh man, I remember uh, for Father's Day I bought my bo- my dad like we bought him a bottle of like Johnny Walker Gold or something, and they gave me a little shooter of uh, the Johnny Walker Blue, which is like really good whiskey. And I sipped on that shit for an hour, and like no whiskey I've had since then has been anywhere close. But like I don't know, it was just it was nice savoring it. Like you could taste the barrel. <laughs> is whiskey your favorite? That's uh, mine, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I tend to stick with whiskey, and I mean, maybe it's just growing up in Texas, but... Is that what it is? I think it might be. Whiskey and scotch I really like, and I mean, those are also my parents' preferences. <laughs> it's like crazy how much you pick up for, from your parents. Yeah, oh yeah, I was going to say that because you brought that up earlier. My question to you was like, how much of it was like... Because even now, I guess you do it as you grow up, mm-hmm. but now I'm not like, noticing... So the, there's the, there is the good that they teach you, but I'm noticing like the bullshit they said to me. Like maybe they weren't even meant to be. Like I'm like, what the fuck were you talking about when you said that to me? You know, oh. you ever catch that? Like I'm like, what uh, the you, hell? What <laughs> you think of your parents as like the Ubermensch? You know, you're yeah. like, this is the ideal that I have to strive through. My mother is the smartest person I know. Yeah. My father is the kindest and most hardworking. <laughs> I grow up, and I'm like. My dad's got a temper problem. Like, oh, yeah. no shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't live with my dad. Like, I live with my mom and my stepdad. Mm-hmm. And I, like, you, I think you said it, I absolutely 110 respect my mother and love my mother. I love, I, I even told her, I'm like, well, Ma, I will, I will go to jail for you, I'll die for you, whatever. And I mean that 
Mm-hmm. But there's a certain times I'm like, you were wrong with what you said. There were you were. There's sometimes you were wrong. But I can't blame my mom. No. I give her that because she was 15. I can't blame her. I'm like, what the fuck were you saying? Or my, especially my dad. But I'm like, what the fuck were you saying when you were trying to tell me that? Like, ugh, I don't. I just like, I think it's important to, of course. I think you, it's weird to try to differentiate the good and the bad they told you. Because oh, like you're saying, you do hold them up to a, such a, this I plateau, see. and you're like, wait, 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 that was wrong what you did, or what you said, <laughs> you know? You ever feel that way? Oh, I do. No, oh. definitely. I think the two hard, pers- the hardest lessons I learned is, first off, my parents are just people trying their best. Yeah. And also... You have to do it. And I mean, that's a whole other thing. But like, those are the two hardest lessons I learned is like, my dad doesn't know what he's talking about half the time. <laughs> it's my mom. Like, my mom's got three degrees under her belt. And like, sometimes she's talking and I'm like, mom, you're bullshit. Of course, I don't say that to her face. Yeah, right? yeah you never do, right? <laughs> no, no, my mom is too. I'm, I'm absolutely scared of my mother. Are you, how many, do you have siblings? Uh, yeah, I've got two older sisters. Oh, they're, uh, they're half. They're actually my half sisters. They were from my mom's first marriage, uh, and then I've also got a younger brother. And what's really funny is like, uh, me and my brother both have like really conservative, like old English names. You know, my name's William, and then my brother is Nicholas, and then my sisters are Kirsty and Panda. Like Panda. Yeah, dude. Oh, my okay. uh, my oldest sister's legal name, like her given name, was Panda. Nice. And uh, looking at her now, I'm like, you couldn't have been a Tiffany or a Brittany or an Ashley or a Panda. Like, that's all you've ever been. <laughs> that's a cool name. I give her that. Oh, yeah. She lives up to it. She's teaching preschool now, and she, she fucking loves it. And I couldn't yeah. imagine a better spot for her. She's been through a lot. A lot of my lessons I learned, I learned vicariously through her. Yeah, I kind of wish I had older siblings, but I guess now I have to be that older sibling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Do you have any younger siblings? Uh, my sister, she's 12. And uh, I have I have a weird family tree. My dad and my stepmom have two kids. Mm-hmm. They're 12 and 10. Then my, my stepmom had a kid who was older than me, so I have an older stepmother, just a year older. And then I think I've said it on here, so fuck it, I'll say it. Um, like two years ago, my dad was like, Hey, I gotta tell you something. I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like, you have a half brother. He's eleven. No, well, he's eleven now. And he's like, so I had a half brother from. He has a half. He has a son somewhere out there. Well, I know him. That's my boy. I like him. Zayden, shout out to him. But yeah, he just told me about him like two years ago, and I'm like, cool. So yeah, I have like little brothers and sisters. They look up to me and all that shit. So no. you know what I mean. So yeah. It's, yeah. No, it was really nice about coming from um, two older sisters because I saw how they fucked up. Yeah, I didn't get that. Out, like, okay, I can fuck up this far before mom and dad get mad. Like, I remember, I remember, I was like twelve or so, and my parents freaking out because my sister would come home smelling like pot. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then you know, I am like sixteen, eighteen, and I'm smoking weed. And my parents find out, and my mom's like. As long as you do it in the garage and the house doesn't smell like marijuana, it's fine. I'm like, okay, mom, I'll keep it in the garage. Of course, I didn't because <laughs> I'm stupid and don't realize how good I've got it. We're all stupid back then, huh? That kind of are, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I like keep it. I even back then, but I still do like keeping an open communication with my mother. Just being honest with her. Oh, yeah. Even if she doesn't want to hear it, I'll tell her. Fuck it. And, dude, I've got such a problem talking to my family. Like, you? Yeah. And I mean, like, it's not anything... Come unlock the door. What? Come unlock the door. That door? Yeah. Why? Because it's locked. No, don't lock it. I don't have my key. Go give me my keys and you can lock it. Key. Huh? What key? Hmm. What are you talking about? Don't lock it. God damn it. She's too big. That was my little sister. <laughs> How are you doing over there? You doing alright? Good. Just hanging out? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, babe. I said, can I have the whiskey? Yeah, you can have the whiskey. <laughs> Do you feel welcome? 
I just want, I was gonna watch you take the shot and see. Oh, yeah. Alright, baby. Yeah, the dogs. No pressure. No pressure or anything. Just yeah. gonna take the shot. Don't fuck up taking that shot. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> Babe, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. Ah, she got it. <laughs> Ooh. How's your life over there? You doing alright? I am. I'm I should have prepared better. I should have had the third mic out, but I didn't put it on my bed. I didn't bed. even warn you she was coming. I yeah, when I when I like planned it with you, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just go over there by myself. And then she was like, you said we'd go to the fair today, and I'm like, <laughs> I did, didn't I? <laughs> I've been there. Or my girls, and they're like, you said that, and I like, you just said, I'm like, fuck, I did say that. I guess I gotta commit. Uh, dude. <laughs> the thing is, is like, it feels like the bar for men is set so low. Right? Like, I've got a coworker who's constantly bitching about his women. And it is women. And, like, the thing is, is, like, half the time I want to tell them, and I'm like, dude, if you're just honest with them, like, girls would go over the moon if you're like, I actually like you, and you say it and you mean it, you know? And you're like, I'm not messing around on you, but you also got to not mess around on them. And then you give them a flower occasionally, and they're like, this is the best man I've ever met. Every day I found out, I, I find out how low the bar is. And then I go and hang out with this coworker of mine, and I'm like, oh, that's why the bar is so low. <laughs> I, I have a guy like that in my life. He is a, quite the dog. No, oh, yeah. And it's just like, I don't know. My coworker, you know, he's older than me, and like half the time, like, we, well, part, part of my job is like, we've got to go out of town a lot. Like today I went out to Hale Center, not even out to Hale Center, but like drove to Hale Center and then drove an hour to the west of it. And like, he was bitching about his girl the whole time, and like, half the time I wanted to be like, dude, like, just be honest with her. <laughs> like, you, ever, you ever feel like when people do that, like, bitch about their girl to you, you're like, just, what, is it even worth it being in a relationship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever feel like that, like, man, dude, just fuck, you could do, not do better, I shouldn't say that, but you could, there's so many women out there, man, what the fuck, if this one is bothering you, get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go find something else, and if the girl you're with is worth it, then fucking work on it. Like, don't just bitch about how it's bad, like... <laughs> yeah. Usually, like, my experience with friends bitching about their girls is, like, what they want to do is very obvious. Uh, and not even just girl, like, guys bitching about girls, but girls bitching about guys. I remember I was having a conversation outside a party with a girl once, and she was like... She was like, I just don't know what to do! And I'm like, well, what do you think you should do? And what she said was exactly what I was going to suggest for her to do. And I'm like, that's what she should do. And she's like, but I don't want to. Oh, yeah, they're just dude. Yeah. I, think, I think life comes down to three big problems, which is what do you want to do? Then do it. And but I don't want to. Yeah. And we all, we all run into that, but I don't want to. You know? I, 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 yeah, I, I, you might. You can say whatever, but like, I'm with you on that, but when people are like, I don't want to, then I just shut them off. Yeah. Like that, no, it's just, to me, that's like, well, then why are you talking to me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, no, like, like, you know, even with, oh my bad, even when like people with, like goals, when they're like, well, then they say, well, 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 this, well, that, well, then shut the fuck up. Yeah. Because you, you obviously know what you need to do. Yeah. Maybe it's it is a relationship, like, maybe it is your job, your goal, well, fucking, sometimes you have to shut the fuck up and do your goddamn, do the work. Dude, yeah, exactly, you just gotta do the work, and I mean, that's the problem I've yeah. been running into recently. Actually, that's not even been the problem I've been running into recently. I'm still stuck on the what do I want to do, you know? I, I feel like, I feel like I'm smart and I'm hardworking and I'm capable, but I just like, I can't figure out what I want to do, you know? There's so yeah. many options. And the thing is, is like, I don't know. That choice overwhelmed me for a while. Yeah. That, that what do I want to do? Like, I had such bad anxiety. Like, I was like... I had, uh... <laughs> I had been tripping ass one day, right? And, uh... I had met God, right? Uh, okay, cool. Do you want cool. me to tell you that whole story? Yeah, go ahead, because I want to uh, get into that. Okay, okay. So, so I was tripping on acid, and we had, we had taken these tabs, which were 300 micrograms, which is like a triple dose. <laughs> and I was hanging out with my buddy, and he's like... He's been real into psychedelics. And I was like, dude, isn't it crazy that monkeys happen to climb down from trees? Uh, we happen to form society. <laughs> this happened to sail down to America. And 
all this shit that like led up to this moment right here, right? Yeah. And he like, he knew what I was on the brink of, right? Cause he'd encountered it before. I had no idea. And he was like, oh yeah, man, that is pretty crazy. Hold on a second, you know? Cause he was new there was crazier shit going on. So I was sitting on my buddy's couch, right? And uh, uh, I kept having this feeling like, it was like this energy was climbing up my spine and right in that hollow in the back of your head, you know what I'm talking about? I, I, I kept having this flash, right? But right before I had that flash, like as the energy climbed up my spine, I'd have this feeling that my body was like a vessel, you know? And I was pulling away from the edges of it and then I'd have that flash and I'd be back, you know, in my body and in my skin. And uh, he was like, I, I popped up. He's like, hey man, I keep having this flash in the back of my head. I feel like my body is a submarine. He's like, oh yeah, when you have that flash, hold on to it. And I'm like, okay, okay. You know, he knows what he's talking about. This is going to be fun, you know? So I'm laying there, and I have this, you know, I start getting the flash, and this time I hold on to it, right? Like, I don't let it pass. I, like, focus on it. And I pull away from my edges, and everything in my vision starts, like, stacking on top of each other like it's computer glitching, right? Okay. You know, like, when the windows pile up on each other? Yeah. It was like that, but with everything. And, uh... I saw like everything in front of me start to burn away. Like it was a film burning and it started in this corner of the eye and then it like burned away. And then suddenly I had no edges, right? Like, you know how you're aware of your hands? Like you know where they are even if you can't see them? I, I was not aware of that. And I was in this field of static and I could see in front of me and to the side of me and behind of me, like all at once. And there was a man sitting there, right? He was sitting, uh, I can't do full lotus, so I'll do half lotus, but he was sitting full lotus, right? With his feet piled on his legs. And he had his arms both okay. like out open, you know, like Jesus being crucified and also like this, like he was meditating. And it was like, I had this realization that that was God, right? Cause there's a difference between learning new information and like realize, remembering something you already knew. And everything I experienced while I was I, I was gone from William, it would, it felt like I was remembering it. You know, it didn't feel like I was learning new information. He was like, "Hi, I'm an avatar of God," and by that, and just so you know, like God is literally everything. Like this microphone. The only difference between me and this microphone is I decided there was a difference. How you know? Uh, and he like gave me the whole tour. He was like, this is the experience of time. And of course I can't remember any of this, you know, but I just remember the general information and nothing that would, no, nothing that would help me in my personal life. Cause that would be too easy. He was like, you were, you were created because right before this, like I was a staunch atheist, you know, I was like, God is a real, really? nothing happens on purpose, you know, uh, we ended up here by accident and life is suffering. And then I met God and he was like, no, it's not. And I'm like, oh, you're right. And you know, there was, there was this, this understanding that it was all one thing and that I was put here on purpose. And then like this life, like the entirety of human history, everything we understand to be the universe was a passing thought in, in a monolithic being so large that I couldn't understand. You know? Motherfucker. Yeah. And I like, I like came out of it and I was like, all right, I need to look into spirituality. And I talked to my buddy and he's, uh, his, his family's from the Philippines. And so he pointed me toward Eastern philosophy because that's what he learned it through, you know? And I started looking real into like, uh, like Buddhism. I was about like to say that Taoism. Buddhism. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there, there was a lot of things I read there that like I connected with, but like overall I didn't really connect with it. And then uh, I found the Bible again, right? And like, to be clear, I, uh, I had been raised Church of Christ. You know, I had been raised Christian. Um, but, but I had rejected that because there's a lot of hypocrisy in the church, you know? Like, you go to church. Well, it's run by man, man. Yeah, it's run by man. But, that happens, you know, right? It started to read the Bible again and interpret it for myself instead of like trying to accept somebody else, accept somebody else's interpretation of it. It was like, it felt way more charged, you know. Like I, uh, I got that same feeling I did when I was when I was outside of my body, you know, reading the Bible, and it was like, man, Jesus was onto something. Man, oh man. Dude, did you ever uh, did you ever read that uh, Jesus might have just been a mushroom? 
Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I was just about to say there has never been a time in my life where I felt like this should have happened, and just now because I was gonna say everything in my life has led up. Literally, I'm, I'm not lying to this because I well, I haven't read that, but I listened to a podcast today and yesterday about how early man and early Christians and Jesus and religion has always somehow come across some connected with mushrooms and psychedelics. Yeah, it's like and, terms and, and, us, like, and just, just how much... No. Like, what, what, I've rem- what I remember was how like the Egyptians, mm-hmm. their whole, their whole existence was this the whole life you were given, whether it was twenty years or eighty years, was you you're, you're spend your time here preparing to die or preparing when you die, mm-hmm. and they were there's evidence that suggests that they were taking psychedelics. There's evidence that suggests yeah. early yeah. Christians to meet God. You took psychedelics. You took mushrooms. You took yeah. the, and that's what I mean. Like Dude, Jesus was born in like, manger in like rain and was, manger, oh God. It's grows in grain, psychedelic mushrooms. And I've like, never done it, and I've never wanted to till recently. And now I know that you said this to me, that I need to because I do feel like it is. As I was heard, it's a it's a golden ticket to meet God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, mean, I need to. Is, is like one of the things I want you to prepare for is that door can only be open from the other side. And I mean, I feel like psychedelics definitely make you more, more open to it. Like Buddhists go through a lifetime of meditation. No, that's what my you. that's what my stepdad said. You know, it take, you know, psychedelics is like a it's it's, it's 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 more of a quick trip than it is like prayer and meditation. That takes a whole lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a longer. But that's why, why God gave us psychedelics, so we could just, you know. I've never more. I've never felt more. Cause like my girlfriend's into that like astrology and psychedelic so like oh, yeah. path, paths crossing and all that, and I you know, Dude. it's not that I brush it off, but for you to sit here and we've never really talked outside of like no. you know a few parties, yeah, and if yeah, you sit here yeah, to yeah. tell me this and you sit here to like say very similar things that I've experienced in these past few days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, man. It's time. It's time. It's time to do it. And I, 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 Dude, if you feel yeah. the call, like... It's, I've never felt it more than now. After we, held, we stopped recording. But if you feel the call, like, fucking answer it, you know? Yeah. Like... That's why um, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. I, it's, 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 um... Like, I've had cousins... My cousin died mm-hmm. just this week. Rest in peace to you, man. And I've heard about... Death in podcast podcast because that's all I listen to because I'm trying to stand off social media because of the debates mm-hmm. because I don't want to be on that show because it's annoying <laughs> but uh, it's like it's like I already decided it's yeah, yeah but it's like don't work out I guess I'm going to war but it's just so crazy how much everything's pointed to death God and psychedelics I'm not lying to you mm-hmm. when I say that and so maybe they're all the same we're all no, dude, connected you, look, you know you connected look across religions you know you look at the buddhist tenement which is like be still just listen and then you know you go to a, a super western religion like christianity because mm-hmm. christianity well my it might not have started out as a western religion because it did start in the middle east mm-hmm. and you know uh there is the theory you know if you read the bible jesus like starts out as a child and all of a sudden he's an adult and it's said that in those missing years he had gone over to Tibet to uh, Tibet to study with the monks, and then you you look at what he's teaching, and what he's teaching is remember the lilies, you know, uh, they grow, you know, they work not, they toil not, yet even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed as one of these. And today they are gra- grass in the field, and tomorrow cast in the oven. And if God so cl- care for the flowers, how much more will He care of you, O ye of little faith? And like. That, that verse, which I had, uh... Oh, that right there. There you go. Sorry. I didn't know it. Uh, <laughs> no, but, man. I mean, I... It's just I, like, the more you look at other religions, the more you realize that they're saying all the same thing. It's very, like, very, very similar, right? You can call it what you want. Mm-hmm. I've said it on the podcast. You can call it God. You can call it the universe. You can call it Buddha. Yeah. No, I, I think I've said Good the energy. Verbatim, verbatim. Good energy. And then, um... Like, you, like I don't want to get in... I, I, I have gotten into that spiritualityness like that. Mm-hmm. I, I like it. I like I, I like the idea that you know I don't 
church, all that. I, I, I was Catholic and all that, but I do believe. I'm starting to now. I didn't even when I went to church with like of a heaven and a hell and it's a good. Like, oh, <laughs> no, I, it's not even that. It's just like, how is that conceivable? Yeah. But now I'm like, you know, maybe it's just an alternate reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just a. It's you, just like you know, um, you know, and then I heard that when they're talking about psychedelics, like it's just a frequency we tune ourselves into that we can't when we're sober. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and and maybe I mean, that's you, what you heaven is. Your, I, I firmly believe that you can tune yourself into that uh, that frequency sober. It just takes a lot of work. No, yeah, 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 I do too. I, I do. Yeah, yeah. Psychedelics are a short term solution. Like after I met God, I popped out of that, and I'm like. Can I do that sober? Like, that was my yeah. first question, because I already knew I could do that shit sober. Yeah, I know. But, uh, I got a lot of problems with the Catholic Church, specifically because they were, like, the first major Christian yeah, religion. Yeah, everybody does. Everybody has their own problem with religion. But, like, you, you gotta look into the esoteric texts. Like, if you look at the esoteric texts, like, the, the books that they took out of the Bible, they talk about, first off, the power of religion. Like, Mary Magdalene wrote a book, and that's not in the Bible. But yeah. Mary Magdalene was like super close to Jesus, but Peter was like, women can't have power. No, nah, yeah, they talk about that in that podcast. It's just like sort of like the politics and all the, mm-hmm. the like, what he said was, why why would priests and, and all these religious guys want you to hear this when, so if you could take psychedelics, then there's no need for a priest. Yeah. Because then you can meet God and talk to God without, um, you know, these guys. Dude, my connection you know I mean? with God is my connection yeah, with God. Yeah, and then you don't need a priest. Your connection with God is your connection with God. And I want your connection to God to be with your connection to God, not mine. And that's you what know? they're like. It's sort of the reason why modern Western science is like, and even like modern e- Egyptian e- Egyptologists are like, that never, they're kind of shunning it away. Yeah, because yeah. it goes against everything we thought we knew. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the other thing is... I love it. I love it. I love hearing all this, man. I do. You take psychedelics, they kind of wake you up. You're like, oh, this is... This is a game. Like, what is happening on this earth is not not real in the grander scheme of things, you know? Like, we... We. You know? And... Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, when I say we, I mean, like, God. Because God is... is is all of us and everything. Yeah, I, I feel you that. Um, I forgot what I lost my train of thought. My bad. Um, give me a second. We, uh, we set out, we set out to this and we're like, I think it would be fun to, uh, to experience bad things, you know? Cause the feeling that I experienced while I was on acid, like what I was telling you about where I met God, that feeling that I experienced was so good that it made me suicidal. I was like, if I kill myself, I can get back to that feeling. And granted, really? I was in a, yeah, granted, I was in a very abusive relationship, and it took me a while to acknowledge the abuse because, like, narcissistic abuse is like something that's hard to pin down, and it's like even now it's hard for me to to uh, to tell you like what it was because like what what they said seems completely reasonable if you take it like at that one point. But it's just like constant, you know. Um, man, I don't want to get into that. But um, you can get whatever you want. If you want, to, <laughs> if you don't want to, then it's fine. Um, but, but, and I, I, I think that was part of it. But the feeling I experienced on it was so perfect. It really? Was like, yeah, dude, it was yeah. just absolute bliss. You ever drop food color into like water and just watch it disperse? I can't say I. Like, I Dude. know what you're saying. Like, yeah, I can yeah, relate yeah. to that. Like, yeah. I, I was the food cutting, dispersing in the water, you know? I just, I had no idea. It was just absolute bliss. And the Buddhists have this karsa- conception of sarsa- sarshama, you know? Which is uh, roughly translated the sea of souls, which is what we're living in now, right? And uh, my buddy, who who is the Buddhist, who uh, I was tripping with, like... He had, uh, he had pointed me, he told me a word and I forgot it, but it was like, the reason that we have this is because Nirvana is just so good that you don't realize how good it is without the bad, you know? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is like, the bad things in my life, and granted, I am very sad, you know, I'm very content with my life. Uh, I want to have more money, but I think that might just be the internalized capitalism because I was raised in a capitalist system, I'm like, Oh, I gotta have more money so I'm more financially secure. I'm with you on that, but... The know. thing is, is, 
I pay my rent every month. Yeah. You know, you know I go camping life. once a month. I can afford my eighth of weed every week. Like, I really have nothing to complain about. But the thing is, is like, we have to have the bad in order to contextualize the good. Yeah. You know, because if it was there's no good, bad without good, right? Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, is there's also there's also no duality. You know, we have this idea of good and evil, but like. What, what one person's good is, is could be another person's evil, you know, like you mug, me, you know, say for instance, you mug me, you know, and you get $400 out of my wallet. That is evil to me, right? Same but that idea. $400 is good to you because now you can feed your family yeah. and pay your rent. Yeah. And that, that's, just, that's what I'm starting to learn about is I think is like the complexity of humanity. Yeah. And like, man, like it's just... It's yeah. never black. It's never black. It's never this or that. It's never, and I don't think a lot of people understand that now. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think they no. or either want to or try to. And we're so quick to label things. It's because it's, it's the quickness. Yeah, it's we're the so quickness quick. of. We're so quick to categorize I, things. I, I, and I and I, that's why I like listening to philosophers or just people who've lived life. Like, can you understand how much human nature is? It's it's, it's 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 fucking nuts. Human nature is, yeah, you know, yeah. we're 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 complex beings, you know. Yeah. But we're also simple beings, and in a way, you know, it's uh, I'm I'm starting you to feel good. I've also I'm starting to learn that, and I'm starting to learn like what it means to be human, and what it means to like you're saying, feel good. Like I think I think be selfish and just do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, yeah. but like at the same time, like. I don't know. Hedonism, like that, that pursuit of feeling good all the time, is very tempting. You know. It is. Like, uh, and you can do it without hurting nobody. It. But the thing is, is like, the, <laughs> yeah, that's the, what, I think that's what's wrong to me. I've seen is like you can do it without hurting yeah. people, and you it know, sucks. And the thing is, is like I try and live my life doing what I want, but yeah. the hard lesson to learn is like. Doing what you want long term versus doing what you want short term. Like, I don't want to clean my fucking room. You know, my room is a fucking mess. <laughs> yeah. But I really want to live in a clean environment. No, yeah, know? that's where it's like the small things turn into big things. Exactly. You know I, mean? I like that idea. I don't know. I try to live a balanced life and all that, but it's like I do want to do what I want. But if I wouldn't do what I want, I'd I think I'd be dead. Yeah, you know, the thing <laughs> is, in order dead. to do what you want, I would be drinking that every fucking day. Yeah, in order to do what you want, <laughs> yeah. you kind of gotta do stuff you don't want. Yeah. Like, I wanna go camping yeah. all the there time. There you go, there you but go. But in order to go, your ass. Yeah, yeah, in order to go camping all the time, I gotta work fucking yeah, yeah. eight to five every day. I am so glad we did this. And I'm glad you're saying this because I don't think a lot of people understand that. Yeah. You know, you could you can say left, right, Democrat, Republican, Atheist, not. It's. I think it comes down to that. Like, you got to do the shit you don't want to do. You got to do the shit you don't want to do. To do the one things you want to do. Exactly. You know. And we're not. And I fail you on that one because I want to be rich. I've said it. I've said it out here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I do. But I think you still can be a good guy. And I still, you think you can give back and be a a Christian, if if you will, or a good Buddhist, if you, or a good spiritual Mm -hmm. man, if you will. Yeah. And still be rich. Yeah, yeah. And I do want to be that, but I understand I gotta eat shit because I'm gonna eat shit for years. Yeah. Especially doing this. Who likes it? Patreon. <laughs> yeah. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I I, I love talking. I you know I, I I I thought when I was gonna talk to you, you were gonna ridicule me for being this or that because I've seen like your bio, a cab, and all that. You know. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were gonna be like. I was, I was a little scared, not gonna lie. Like he's he's gonna no, come over here and shit on me, what I've put on my social media. But no, I mean, we can be friends. Yeah. We can be cool. Yeah. And we can talk about psychedelics. Yeah. And still be, you still be this way and I still be that way. No, you know what I mean? I love it. The, I, I, you know, bringing up my bio, like, yeah, you know. Like, I had to, I had to, I had to, because yeah, yeah, I was yeah. scared. No, no, no. I got, I got a cab in there, because the problem with police is, like, not necessarily police. Like, I've met officers. And. Like, an individual officer is a great person, but the problem is, is like, systematically it's bad. You know, systematically. And, the th- uh, you know, systematically it, it unfairly targets black people. And the reason that it well, unfairly... Well, it can't. What was that? It can. It can't. Or I mean, is it? Or no, is the it? thing is, is it does. Okay. You know? 
because black neighborhoods tend to be how much how, how would you feel if I said this? It does to poor people. Yeah, no. Who just was, so happen to be black? Who just that so was, happen to be my color? Who just sometimes are white? Yeah, sometimes they white. just but they, the thing is, they, is they like, go against poor people, dude. The, the that was the point I was getting to. Okay, my bad. My, <laughs> that was the point I was trying to get to is that black people don't commit more crimes than white people. Poor people commit more crimes than rich people. Yes, and like that's the other is. problem. The other day I was tripping shrooms and I'm like, I could be a capitalist. It's in my power to create capital. And then I like sobered up and I'm like, oh, the system loaded against me. <laughs> but the hey, problem is, is the system, you know, and I I am a I identify sorry. I got birds now. That's fine, man. Um, <laughs> I um I identify as a white Christian male. You know, like oh, I I'm sick. I wouldn't I don't go to church every Sunday, but I do read my Bible and I do follow the teachings of Christ as I understand them. Uh, and you know, obviously, I'm a white male. You know, I'm even right-handed, and things are uh, things are rigged for right-handed people too, which nobody ever talks about. Yeah, I've said that but before. Like, actually, yeah. I'm left-handed. <laughs> this is where it's fucking right-handed. No, dude, I, uh, you want me to get the tools out of my bag? I'm all right-handed. But um, left-handed scissors. Y'all need more of them. I just oh. want to say that. Left-handed <laughs> scissors are so nice, even as a right-handed person. Um, yeah, I can like yeah. line things up with my right hand where I'm real fine. And then just, no, nah, but that's what I believe. I believe in uh, equal opportunity. Yeah, you know. That's what it is. And the thing is, it's like, I, you know, recently I, uh, especially after following the trip where I was like, I could be a capitalist, I could create capital. I feel like, I, I don't know, and maybe my friends, I don't know. Uh, I feel like my friends might kind of shh. Sorry. No, what were you going to say like, about that? Um, the point I was going to make is that, um, I feel like capitalism provides more opportunity than, like, communism does. And while I think communism will work better in a perfect world... Yeah, but it doesn't. It's never we don't has. live in a perfect world! It never has, dude. And I feel that 100%. And I like competition. I do. I like... But, of course, it has to be equal. And yeah. it's not right now. It's no, not. It's not. It's not. But it's if it was equal, I, that's why I said... You know what I say? I said, let's give everybody free school. College. Yeah. Let's give everybody free college. Let's see how many graduate. Yeah. How much of you motherfuckers would actually use that opportunity to graduate? Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, I had my college basically paid for it. You know? And I was like, you know, I had all these classes and I'm like, oh, I don't want to go. Yeah, people want that. And I'm like, you don't want that because you would squander it because you're, yeah, you're no. fucking ungrateful. I squandered, I squandered. Well, not, not you, my bad. I'm just saying, like, Americans that are just ungrateful and wasteful. Some all the time, not all of them, but they are, and I'm like, you. No, <laughs> let me get you back on that on the headphones. Sorry, that's cool. <laughs> I just off. like my drug habits. In, in in the perfect world, which we don't live in, communism would be. Jesus was a fucking probably communist, right? Yeah, no, Jesus was yeah, communist. Yes, yeah, he like, was. Jesus was a communist. <laughs> he was. I'm sorry. No, I, I I'm saying Jesus that to you. Jesus was a communist. I'm saying that to you right now, and I like capitalism. Yeah. yeah, he was, and they, and that's what a lot of people couldn't give agree up with. Everything you live yeah. and go live in a commune. But the thing is, is communism doesn't work on a scale like America. But like, if you and me and all my buddies were like, we're gonna make a commune, yeah. that would work because we have a personal relationship with everybody we're with. And I'm like, if I don't go harvest this uh, this corn, Roy's gonna go hungry, yeah. and I like Roy. Roy makes me my chairs. And I mean, I think that's what's so important about community. It's just that... It's, it's the most important thing to me right now. Dude, oh, I wish we lived in such smaller communities. Like, in my ideal world, we would have we would have these little communes, you know? Yeah. And by communes, I mean, like, everybody living in that commune wouldn't really have to worry but about how anything. But many, how many people you know? do you know... Answer this honestly. How many people do you know would work for the betterment of everybody else other than themselves? <sighs> Let me see. I think uh, Eli. Maybe you're a little bit more different than me because I know all my friends. Rightfully so. I give them that. That's yeah, their right to be so. selfish. Yeah. And that's me too. If people are good or evil. <laughs> they're they're either selfish, selfish or unselfish. Yeah. And like that's all. That's a hard lesson that I've been learning recently. Is because like before I had this this ego death where I met God. I like I I was super. Like, I'm going to be a good person. I'm going to be super unselfish. And, like, one of the things that I talked about when I talked about God is he's, like, 
you've not been taking care of yourself in exchange for taking care of these other people and that's not okay. And it's like, oh shit, you're right. <laughs> God. <laughs> I need to have a but, talk with the old man upstairs. Um, I, I feel like uh, that's what I mean. Like one. I didn't mean no. I didn't mean for you to call him out. Yeah. No, but no. like, if you are hanging out with those guys, and that's good for you because you're yeah, hanging out with the right no. people. Dude, no, the people, the people I hang out with, like the guy I live with and his girlfriend and her roommate, uh, and even my girlfriend sitting over there, I, I 100% believe these people would. Uh, would Shout put their life on their line for uh, would, would put their life on on the line for other people, and I I want to be that way too. Yeah. And it's just it's hard to find this balance between selfishness between Dude, no you're I saying can't you're do right. this I don't <laughs> have the energy to to go out and do this and I I'm just being mean. selfish. I'll go out there and do it, and you know I think I'm, can I smoke in here? Yeah, good. Um, one of the things I learned is that like, Can I have one? Yeah, go ahead. I bought a I bought a carton the other day for like forty bucks, and I was like, oh yeah. Montegos. You and the everybody in their damn lucky cigarette. <laughs> yeah, man. I um uh, I started Thank smoking you. cigarettes when I was seventeen, and I'd broken up with this girl. Right, we dated for only a month, but at the end of this month. At the end of the month, uh, she was like, hey, I've been talking to my ex the whole time. So I started stealing cigarettes from my older sister, Panda. And I was like, I'm just going to smoke because I don't have the courage to kill myself. And I just want to die! And um, but that's, that's why I started smoking. But I, one of the reasons I've kept smoking is because it brings people together. I've made friends because I smoke. Like the job I have now, I uh, I got because I smoke. Like the guy, uh, the guy who got me the job, his name is John, and he he has definitely internalized capitalism. Like I'm working. What, with what's him. your problem with capitalism? What's my problem with capitalism? I love it. My my love problem it. with capitalism is it is that it's an inherently selfish system. And it doesn't give us the opportunity to be unselfish. Is it always that way, though? I think so. Is because there, there's very little opportunity to, uh, like today. You know, earlier I was talking to you about being on the rides, and I, uh, I, was, I was coming on the downswing, and I knew it wasn't gonna die, like in my mind, but in my heart, I was like, oh, I'm gonna die. And my mind was like, no, these people don't want to get sued. And they don't want to get sued, so they lose money. Not they don't want to. They don't want but is it to is that always do you, can you always say that's the case? Um, I I think that selfish or er, that capitalism inherently because can't those go hand in hand where you're like I don't want us to get sued because I care about these people. No, you don't think so? I think the I can. Uh, if if somebody died that I don't know, you know, I'd like to think that I cared about it, but if it doesn't impact me. I don't really care. Like, I've been way more concerned with with the election and, you know, Trump's rise of fascism than I have with China, you know, putting Muslims in Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to call you up. Call you up. No, and I want to hear... No, no, I'm not. I'm I not, want to be called out. No, I want to <laughs> hear this. Why is Trump a fascist? Because I haven't... Uh, I, haven't, I haven't been explained this, so let me hear it. Okay, Trump is a fascism because, because fascist because he's suppressing fee, free speech. He's trying so how to is he? Money. How is he for suppressing free speech? Because Tell okay, there are, there are states and cities that are like we do not want federal interference in our uh, in these riots that we're having with Black Lives Matter riots. The states' rights. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, uh, sorry, I was about to go off on a tangent. No, 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 no. I just answered my um, question, and you can. Yeah, yeah. I need to know because I don't uh, know because I and, and I need to be uh, informed because I have not done my the, part. The reason that I think Trump is a fascist is because first off, I think Trump is a rant, rampant narcissist, and the reason obviously yes he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, like he's di like he could be diagnosed with narcissist personality disorder because he's a he takes everything as a personal affront, you know. Um, and he, he views Black Lives Matter as an affront to his presidency, 
But the problem is, is he's not filling these needs for for black people. You know, there is a disproportionate amount of police brutality toward black people, and that's echoes of the Jim Crow laws. And I really, dude, I, I really want to believe in the system that our forefathers. I do too. I do too. I do too so much. But at the same time, like looking around, it's just not working. You know, it's not working for I think twenty percent of the population in America is black. I could let me look that up because I'm fairly certain I'm misquoting. Um, but uh, I'm gonna look up for some. They do say by twenty fifty, more than fifty percent won't be white for the first time ever. Yeah, and I mean, like, that's the other thing, is there was, there was this change from, um, if you, if you present as a white person, and I mean, I understand I'm a white person, I understand that I am very privileged as a white male, not even a white male, but a white, right-handed Christian male, the things are, like, built in my way, but I still have troubles, you know, I, I I don't wanna, I don't wanna. They are, but, but as a man who's not that, I just, like. Okay, so 13.4% thir- of, of uh, Americans are black, you know? And there is a disproportional amount of police brutality focused to them. That's echoes of Jim Crow. And um, people are going out in the streets and they're saying, hey, this isn't right. And in response, the police are gassing. You know, like, exactly. I, I read a tweet where, like, the Portland police were like, we were hoping that things would be peaceful, but then these protesters donned gas masks. So if they're expecting to be gassed, we're gonna go ahead and gas them. And uh, police, the, uh, the police as we know them are, are echoes of pre-slavery. Like, the police as we know them started as hunting down uh, escaped slaves. And there, there still is echoes there. And I mean, the other thing you have to look at is that black people are disproportionately poor, and that's echoes of Jim Crow. Uh, and poor people disproportionately commit crimes. They do. You know. I do. I mean, you, you know, you don't see you don't see a way out through legitimacy. You're going to sell drugs. You're going to rob people. <coughs> you're going to racketeer people. And I mean, that's just that's just human nature. Where people aren't inherently good or evil. You they're think inherently so? selfish. You don't think people are inherently good? I don't think they're inherently good or evil. I think they're inherently selfish, mm-hmm. you know? I got me, sort I got mine, an, fuck yours. Sort of and like that's, a... That's my problem. Sort of like an animal? Yeah, sort exactly. Animal. And I mean, we, we have, as humans, we have sentience. We have the power to think about ourselves and the consequences of our actions. But... We we did it all from animals, and I while well, I do believe that that was divine through God, right? Yeah, I, I believe that was not divine inspiration that we that we evolved from animals, and that God did create man, but we started out as something else, and we saw the echoes from that. Is I got mine, fuck you. But we we've kind of unlearned that, but it's just it's it's coded in our DNA, and I think that's the problem with capitalism. And I don't think communism is the answer because, you know, you look at communism, then you've got like, work, right? five people at the top who are like, fuck you, I got mine, you know? And I mean, I, I, I think capitalism is inherently a better system than communism. But I think the true answer is, is somewhere in the middle, you know? We've got people who are enacting inherently selfish like you got me on this podcast not because you know me not because you like me but because well i like you now but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but because at the time you were like uh this guy's offering i think he'd be good for conversation uh which will help my podcast yeah. which is a selfish motive you know and i'm not i'm not racking you for that oh absolutely like, it was like let's, let's get the the views up <laughs> it was i don't want to lie to you i'm not gonna lie to you but it's been a great time, yeah. and we are, we have our differences yeah. with the police and with all this. But, but my whole point, and I told my boy this, I said, because I did see the A cap, and I did see whatever else you have on your bio. I said, look, I need more guys like that because I'm trying to be balanced. Yeah. I need guys on the left. I need guys on the right. I need guys in the middle. 
And, but I don't even know what you are, to be honest, because you've been speaking all this, and I don't even want to know. So don't even tell me. <laughs> but you have spoke to me about the spirituality. And that, to me, is the most important thing. I because think- at the end of the day, it's, like you said, your, your journey with God, my journey with God, or my journey with death and your journey with death. Dude, no, and that's the thing is... Because that's what I'm starting to realize it is. It's your journey to, to, to death because I think that's the ultimate goal. As maybe I am a Christian, and you said you were too. That's our journey, to go to heaven, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what it ultimately is, to die and... Um, Where'd that pack go? I sh- uh, that's our journey. That's our journey as Christian men. If you want to claim that, right? Yeah, To yeah. go to heaven. Yeah. And I mean, uh, one of the things that you have to realize, and especially if you look at those, uh, the esoteric teachings of Christ, is that he taught um, reincarnation. And that was one of the oh, things that was taken apart. Okay. I, I think that hell was invented by the Catholic Church really? in order to sell more pardons because uh, Catholicism and what Martin Luther did, not just to be clear, not Martin Luther King Jr., the civil My, rights the, the activist. The 13th, um, what do you call it? Yeah, yeah, he was like in the 13th century. No, he, he wrote the grievances. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. wrote like, uh, I don't yeah, remember him. It was a hundred really stupid. But, but yeah, I know he did Martin Luther. Yeah, yeah. I know he but did. But I think Catholicism, or Catholicism? Uh, Catholicism invented hell in order to sell more pardons because that was what they were doing. They were like, if you give the Catholic Church money, then you will go to heaven. They still do. I think Christians I think still do that. Yeah, they still do that. And I mean, I think like more money you go to heaven type shit so you don't think there's a hell though you don't think there's no i do okay i think that this is hell i think uh the buddhists have this car this concept of uh, it would seem like it because we're suffering here yeah, yeah they have this concept of sarshama which is roughly translated the sea of souls and i think i'm going to say this earlier he did yes yeah yeah, yeah. But, but you just uh, said that so this is this is hell and any suffering that you experience is wrought by yourself, you know? I guess uh, uh, I think, you know, Buddhists have this teaching that attachment is the root of all suffering, and I agree with that. But I also think that you can get a lot more joy out of attachment than unattachment. And I'm all right with, you know, being attached to this woman over here. I because like that. she she is wonderful. She is very kind. She's a, she's a great lay, being frank. Uh, hey, but you know, I said more she frank like that too. Like, Why is this bitch saying this? And then I think about it. I'm like, oh, that bitch is right. I'm sorry for calling you a bitch, Haley. I love you. I want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I, I, but I'm with you on that one. Any any suffering you wrought is by yourself, and I also think we need this hell in order to understand how good we have it. You know, God set out to be like, uh, you know, God God is perfect, and I believe that. You know, God is perfect. He's incapable of evil. But part of the reason why he is incapable of evil is it goes back to to the Garden of Eden is he had no concept of evil. You know, he, he, and I say he, but it's really a they because it's a genderless thing. Maybe it's a she. Yeah, it, it could be a she. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a she. It's both a That's she and a he. That's what I've heard. Uh, I'd rather say she. Yeah, yeah. We're, gonna, we're gonna say she just because the patriarchy is called it for a he this long. She uh, she set out and she's like things are so good. I don't understand how good they are. I'm gonna break myself into all these little pieces so I can understand suffering, and I can understand hardship, and I can understand struggle, because she didn't have that, you know. Um, <sighs> I've heard people explain God like that, where it's like. Why would God allow us to go through this? And then somebody was like, well, because God wants to experience yeah. death. Yeah. God wants to experience suffering through yeah. us. And he uses us to experience it. And the thing you got to understand is that there is, there is no difference between Roy or William or Haley and God. You know, God just has more awareness of what's going on yeah, I've than never, we do. I've never really... I've never really felt like there was a God until this shit, like, like you understand. Until I've started to, like, try to understand the 
the idea of humanity. This is like, we'll just, what the fuck? Why would God, like, because I, I read a book and I was like, why would God let us do this? And he was raped and, and murdered. And I was like, why would, why would God allow? Why would this, God allow suffering? Why would he allow this thing because that he created to happen? Oh, but then I'm like, because he wants to, because he has to experience everything through him. Exactly. You know? So then I got it and I'm like, okay. And you know the thing you and, and, and it's so hard. It's probably hard for you out there if you don't dive deep into it. Because it, it, it sometimes you just wanna like be ignorant and you just wanna live your fun life. And I get it. I get it. I get it. You do not want to go into that. You just wanna go through life, go through the motions. Mm-hmm. I get it. But when Dude, you start uh, understanding and you start trying to understand it, you're like you get suffering, but you get you get that there's no there's there's darkness, but there's also light at the okay. end. Of, you know what I mean? You, get, you there's both ends. You, you try to balance it out. I like balance. Yeah, that's no. my whole thing. I like balance. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna take a leak real quick. But I have to piss I, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I was I was gonna talk about the concept of uh, that. <clears throat> so the theory behind quantum death is that oh that one yeah yeah your life is Roy. It's like a branch growing out of a tree. No? And any time that you die, you just jump over to closest, uh, the closest limb, you know? Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be, be real with you for a second. I've tried to, uh, tried to, tried to end my life multiple times, you know? Really? But I'm still here. Now, there... Sorry. Uh, no, there... it's all good. <laughs> There were times I've tried to hang myself. There were times I've tried to walk into traffic. There are times I've tried to slip my wrist. And the most recent time I tried to slip my wrist, you know. Uh, I was coming out of this incredibly abusive relationship, you know, where um, I had left it. She was going on Twitter calling me a pedophile. And, like, pedophilia is something that I don't feel like you can can ever recover from. Some, from. And I know I'm, I'm not a pedophile, you know. Like, that's, like, that's, yeah. that's, that's serious. But she, she was going on Twitter calling me a pedophile, and I didn't feel like it was something I could recover from. So I'm like, if everybody hates me, I might as well kill myself. I have very clear memories of sitting on the edge of the tub of my parents, uh, my parents' house, slitting my wrist to the fucking vein, like gushing blood. And if you look now, like I barely have any veins, or like I, I barely have any scars along the veins, but I have memories of like just pouring blood and I remember my phone went off and I had this thought that I was like, it's just, it's just her coming to run more, more dirt in the wound, you know, coming, coming to grind me down. So I might as well not even get in the bath, you know, get out of this, this bathtub. And so I remember laying there in the bathtub and then watching myself stand up, get out of the bathtub and check my phone. And the message I had gotten was uh, from from a guy that one of my friends was dating at the time. And he was like, hey man, you know, people have gone off. You know, I, I've read this shit about you on Twitter. I don't believe it's true. Are you doing okay? And then, then all of a sudden I was standing in my living room wrapped in a towel, shaking. And I was like, mom, dad, I... Uh, just try to kill myself, you know. I need help. But at the same time, I also have memories of lying in the bath and, and, and giving in to giving up. And that's the concept of constant death, is that like any time that you die, you just, since you, you can't perceive death, you don't know what that'd be like. You as Roy, no, I, not, not you as the Godhead. Because there, there is this this ego of Roy. Because Roy is what you interpret the world through, and then the mm-hmm. Godhead is what you actually are. And William is what I interpret the world through, and then Godhead is what I, what I actually am. This this concept of William just jumped over to this option timeline where I survived. Because if you could kill yourself, I'd be dead. But you can't, and so I'm still here. Because you you've got to stay here. Until you figure out what you're meant to figure out, and even then, you don't you don't get to dissolve back into the, that nirvana. You don't get to dissolve back into that godhead. You you 
reincarnate until you learn what you're meant to learn. And that's what, that's what God set out to do when he made this world. Sorry, that's, uh, that's, a, that's heavy. <laughs> no, um, you know, um, if I can be frank with you and honest, this is, um, I've had guys on here and, and, it, and it haunts me because you're being around me. And I can see it in your eyes, you're being with me. I had a guy who was sitting there and he killed himself. He did. And I mean, that's the thing you gotta understand is just because you, as Roy, continue perceiving, that doesn't mean the people around you, you know, the people you understand to be your mother or your girlfriend or your father, continue to perceive that reality because when you when you do something like die or kill yourself, you leave behind a thousand broken realities where the people around you just have to process and perceive that you're dead because the Godhead has to process and perceive that loss. But you as Roy, you you as Roy who is the Godhead can't process and perceive that. So you have to you have to stay until you figure out what you're meant you're just shut here to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah I said that like uh, I did a podcast with the guy and his best friend was here. He was sitting right there. Mm-hmm. I guess I can still see him. He baby, shout out to you. He died. He killed himself. I hate to say it like that, but that's the truth. My cousin, he just died. You know, mm-hmm. it's weird. Death is a. Uh, I don't know. Death is. And they, um, they weren't that close to me. I barely met a baby. My cousin, I've known him for years, but they weren't that close to me. And uh, I think about those. I think about. And I mean no disrespect to what I'm about to say. I just think about your final moments. Mm-hmm. Your final moments. If you if you do choose to go that way, that has to be tough. Oh. That has to be. Uh, and nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves. No, who, no matter who you are, nobody deserves that ugliness that goes towards that. And I and I and he, baby, you know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And I'm sorry. Uh, well, luckily, you were here. Yeah. So you're. Yeah. You're, no, I. You're I, here. I got lucky. He you did. Know. He did. You got. I should clarify. You got lucky. You. Uh, you happen to live in the reality where I clept to alive. Yeah, this is. This is the reality we're yeah. in. And you're here, and I'm, I'm yeah. very, very, very thankful. <laughs> I cannot express this though. The, even if, even if I hadn't, if you never had told me, I. I I've said it, like, I cannot express the gratitude I have towards people who want to come on the show. I cannot. I can't. Because it's so, it's so, I feel so lucky. I feel so great that people come here and want to get drunk, want to get high, whatever. Just want to come talk. And I love it. And I love it. And then, but then my, but you know, men, you know, you know, we were talking here. And I'm going to be frank with you, Nambiro. I think about the guys that aren't here. I do. I think about E baby he's not here. I think about Alec. I think yeah. about like I, I, I try not to feel guilty because I shouldn't feel guilty because I'm alive and I'm thankful for it. I'm always thankful for life. But they're not here. Yeah. And it's so weird because he was right there. I can still see him right there. I, I do I do I and and it's weird. Dude. It's 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 odd. But it's an odd feeling. Yeah. But you're here. You're yeah. here. So thank you for no, being I, here. Uh, I remember... You know what I mean? It's just I remember, cool. I I'm thought. not cool, but it's, it's, yeah. I'm thankful that you're here. Yeah, yeah. All right, I remember this thought where I, I was sitting in um, an observation. And the room that they got you an observation is this bed, right? And it's not even a bed. It's like a plastic block that they've got strapped to the floor. That uh, I remember sitting there and I couldn't have my phone. I mean, I, I had my phone because my mom was using it and I was playing games and shit. But one time, she, she was reading through the messages that my ex had sent me, and I remember thinking, well, now what? You know? Yeah. Like, I I can't get out of this shit. Like, I might as well, I might as well try and enjoy it as much as possible. Because, like, hedonism, hedonism inherently, uh, I feel like it has a negative connotation. But I feel like hedonism is the way that you should live your life. But it's that that um, you gotta learn that balance between I don't want to clean my room versus I don't want to live in a dirty environment, you know. 
And that, that's why, that's what you're put here to learn. You're put here to learn that shit sucks, you know? This, <clears throat> this. 100%. Life suffering, huh? Shit fucking sucks, and you've got to live a good life in spite of it. Oh, you know? that's what I was going to say. As much as shit sucks, it's, uh, life's pretty great, though. No. There's a, there's a, there, I think. Sucks. <laughs> I think, I, I think there, there's both. I think there is. Because I, I want to say that, I do want to say that I enjoy life 110%. And I, like I said, I'm thankful for life. But then life throws you a curveball, like with your cousin dying and your family dying. And then you understand that life is, is happiness and joy, but it's also pain and suffering. It is. Would you it is. appreciate that, that happiness and joy if you didn't have that pain? I'm going to say that too. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I get it. And I get it. You can't have, I've said it. I think I said it. You can't have light without dark. And it, and it sucks. And I just think about the people who had to take those sacrifices for us to enjoy life. No. I think about them. And I think about you, Eric. I do think about you, E baby. I think about you, Alec. I do. I do. And I didn't know you all that well, but it, it weighs on me that you were part of my life. And now, now we're alive. We're alive and we're grateful. And it's just it, you too, E baby, over there. Man, let's, you've been weighing on my heart since that podcast. I will not I will not lie to you. I've never lied to you guys, and I'm not going to lie to you now. And I like you too, man. That's, you're 23, brother. You were 23. That's young. That's young. But I guess that's just the way sometimes life works, huh? Yeah. It's just okay. the way sometimes life works. Because you, as Roy, have to deal with that. You, I do. Right? And it's, I, I, and I, I don't even know. It's just like, it's not so much me mm-hmm. as much as his mother. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Don't discount your suffering from that. Because no, it's sad. And I yeah. have memories of him, but it's like, I'm, so, I'm sad for his mother. I'm sad for his cousins. I'm sad for... I'm sad for E baby and Vari, because Vari was very close to him. I know you were a brother. It sucks. But I was thinking about that. I was thinking about just life, like everything. You know, the greatness of life and then the death of But maybe death isn't that bad. Maybe we shouldn't look at it as that bad. Yeah. I mean, I think as, as much as we've just talked about that. I mean, one, of the, <laughs> one of the things that I experienced when I talked to God is I... Uh, I saw this vision of um, this golden string strung from the rafters to the floor, right? And each each bend of the rope was somebody's individual life, and there was a golden light moving along all of that. And I realized that that was each person's perception of it. But that golden light was all God, you know? It was all the Godhead. And that, 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 that suffering... It's necessary in order for you to appreciate what you have, is, you know? Uh, uh, that's kind of the shitty part of it. It has to happen, huh? Our, our, our brains work on binary, on binaries. Our brains yes. work on some things, and God is a, is a no thing. I, I don't want to call it a nothing, but it's a no thing, you know? Uh, because we, we don't have perception of that, and he... he I don't want to say he doesn't have perception of it because I feel like they do. You know, they do have that perception of the no thing, but they need the perception of the thing in order to contextualize how good you really have it. You know, <laughs> the, I think anything above anything is, and you can. You can I want you to comment on what I'm about to say. Is like above anything. Being born in America, mm. being American, you have it very well. Yeah, you do. Dude, you have it very good. Great. I was, I was. So it is as hard as you might. Is as much as the odds are stacked against you here in America. At least you're not born in, you know, those third world countries and those communist countries. Yeah. I mean, that's like, my thing too. I think, com- dude, that's what gets me. I think communism would work in a perfect world. It would. It would. It would. Don't I'll live give you in that. a perfect world. 
No, we don't. You know, Jesus, like you said, Jesus, that was that was his idea. It didn't happen. Jesus was telling his disciples, <laughs> like, give up your shoes. Yeah, you know, man, we didn't know what they you know, I give you give that, up man. Everything you own to. And that's, that's one of the things I've learned recently is that, like, God and the universe will provide. Like, I, I am constantly stressed about rent, but every month I make rent, you know? So why do I worry about rent, you know? But I do worry about rent. <laughs> I'm for that. And I, I, just, I just live that for those moments where I am, where I am nothing, where I am not. Really, I'm not my relationship with this beautiful woman over here. I'm not really shout out to her and doing all right over there. Woo! <laughs> you doing good over there? Um, I'm doing okay, yeah. You, you live for those moments that are that are great, and I mean, I, I, um, I take my I take my suffering in turn because I know that how bad I feel right now. I'm gonna feel that much good when it when it comes my turn to feel it. It seems that way. Yeah, that's what I think. I, I was I was sitting. Jesus there. Christ, you know. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, Jesus Christ laid down his life. He laid down his time. He's like so so that we could be forgiven. And I I believe that. You know, I think I think part of the reason why I I am so against the. Christian church is because Christianity preaches this, and this lesson that's like Jesus is so far above you, yeah. but he's not, huh? dude. If you were talking to Jesus, Jesus would be like, "You could do what I'm doing right now." Yeah, you know, he's if a man. you just did it, because Jesus was a man. He's a man. Jesus dealt with these these temptations. I understand, by the way. And he he just he just had the divine intervention. In, or maybe he didn't, because obviously he's been mythological or mythologized by um, by the church and by the Christian Bible to be this perfect person. So I don't know if he's actually ever sinned or not. But I like to believe that he didn't. And I mean, you you have the power in you to be to be like Christ. You have the power in you to be Christ-like. If you just Christ-like. Had, if you just you just had the ability to go. I'm gonna be completely selfless. I'm you know, I'm going to do what other people expected of me and I'm going to live for other people and I think that what spoils down to what would Jesus do, you know? Uh, but the thing is is I as William am not I'm not a selfless person, you know? There are times in my life where I'm like, I gotta eat. <laughs> yeah. You know? I gotta feel good. Yeah. Fuck you. Hmm? And I I do feel guilty for those times when I go fuck you, but that's what that's what makes me human is being able to go fuck you. And what makes me I think I don't know I don't want to say higher than the worst person, but what makes me a good person is the ability to go fuck me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a yeah I think it's a. To a thing like that, like fuck you, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Not many people say that, so I think that's fun. Occasionally. Occasionally, occasionally. it's all right. Occasionally. Not all the time. Not all the time. <laughs> you can't be fuck you all the time because then you end up with billionaires who who don't give a fuck that they're you know people are dying mining cobalt for my iPhone. Um, Steve Jobs didn't care about the people dying to mine cobalt for my iPhone, but but I do. So that I don't know. I don't want to see I'm better than Steve Jobs, but I'm just different than Steve Jobs. I would like to think I could be a Steve Jobs, but still care about the the the, the other people. Yeah. I would like to say I could. Yeah. I'm not Steve Jobs. I want to be on that level, and I want to help my community, and I want to help my people. I do. That's my thing. I think we can have a fun time being communist. Uh, not communist. <laughs> capitalists. I think we can have a great time getting rich. And I think we can all benefit from getting rich. I do. I do. I do think we can all benefit from um, sitting down and talking to each other like this. Yeah. Like this. He, um, like I said, he's, you guys have no idea about police and all that. And I did choose you to come on as a guy who said a cab and all that. 
but we've had a great time. No, and one thing, uh, sorry, he's, you know, I've got ACAB in my Instagram. You do. Lab, but one thing this I would like true. to clarify by ACAB, and, you know, ACAB means all cops are bastards. Yeah, it is. That doesn't mean that there's not good cops, because no. I've met good cops. I've met cops that are wonderful people that want to great cops. But the problem, the problem with uh, the cops is that the system is inherently it is. stacked in against people. I'll give you that, yeah. And I mean, I think that's the problem with uh, capitalism as well, as people get to the top, and once you get to the top, you're like, how am I going to stay at the top? I'm going to hedge things against the people at the bottom. And I think that the true answer is not, you know, 100% capitalist. And to be clear, we don't live in a 100% capitalist society. Because nope. we have things like welfare, you know. Uh, but I also don't think 100% communism is the whole thing because all my needs are being taken care of. Like, I have no need to go out and try and better myself, you know? And I, I think the true answer is is uh, a more socialist society. It's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. It's all about finding that balance. <laughs> no, it really is. A, I give you that. I give you that. It is. I think it's fucked up that billionaires, you know, you look at the clearly, clearly there's a, a wealth gap. Clearly yeah. there's Dude, the thing is, problems. is like, you look at look at uh, how many taxes that you, you paid. I paid like a thousand dollars in or like I, I think it was fifteen hundred dollars in taxes, uh, this most recent cycle. I'm probably wrong on that because I just fill out the form and then spit it out. But then I know I paid more taxes than, you know, somebody like Donald Trump did. And I don't think that's <laughs> it's right. Just, no, you it's know? not right at all. You, you should, you should. To me, the problem is not that everybody should pay their taxes fairly. That's not the problem. The problem is where those taxes go. Yeah. Because clearly, and then, and then we've had, there's a lot of death and all that shit talking in our, in our podcast. But you have my word. Because who am I? I'm going to say, give $5 until it means more to me than it does to the person yeah, I'm giving to. This is what it's about. And uh, the Christian or not, or a communist or not, we got to help our community. Yeah. And I, I didn't say that on last podcast, but, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't broadcast to the world. But I always help out those people. But when I give you $5 and you're ecstatic... Like I, obviously there's a fucking problem in this town. This is my town. You can have my five dollars until <laughs> it means more to me than it does to you. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a problem in this town when that's that's, uh, um, you know, when there's rich millionaires building buildings. That's good. I'm glad you are. I really am because I would do that if I was a millionaire. Hey, you're but keeping me. You're keeping me employed because you need windows for that shit. And, and, and that's I'm my not job. talking shit about you because yeah, that's, yeah. that's the problem. With, that that's part of the capitalism, right? I get it. I get it. And uh, and I get it. There's, but it really resonated with me when I had to give that woman five dollars, and I have to tell you guys that, not to gloat or nothing, but that five dollars meant something to her. If I don't get you shit, it won't get you shit. Let's be yeah. real. But to her, it was the fucking world. That was her. That was her food for the you night. Know? You buy number one. It's not even fucking five dollars. To, to you, you don't have to worry about your meal every night. No, her, I don't. Did. She did. So that's what I mean. So I'm gonna work hard for my city because I love you guys. I do. I do. And I will get emotional. I got emotional before, but I will get emotional now <sighs> because I love y'all. I told you guys, this is my town. I love it. I love it 110%. So whenever a woman has to fucking struggle for $5, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? So we're going to... I am going to work hard for you guys. I am going to bust my ass for you guys because this is my fucking city because I'm part of the snake pit because I love you guys. (laughs) (laughs) But I love you guys. I do. I do. I am. So just so you know, I, I am. I love you 110%. Love it. I do. I do. And you yeah. want to talk shit about this town? You want to talk shit about the people? Go ahead. That's your right. That's your right. I'm going to fucking do my part for you guys. Because I love you guys. 
and I and I want to be a part of this town. And I want to be a part of this community, and I want to do better for us because it starts here. It starts here, brother. It doesn't start in fucking in the grand scheme of love of America. It starts in love, brother. Thank you. You got any last words? Man? That's my last words. I will do my best to bust my ass for this fucking town. You got nah. any last words? Nah, I, I really don't. I think you made the good point. It's uh, it's. Fuck you until fuck you means more than fuck me. <laughs> it is. And, uh, you guys know how I felt. I like capitalism. I want to be rich, but I want to help you guys out. I do. I want this town to win, and I want the city to win. I love you guys with all my heart. All my fucking heart. And you know it. I hope you feel it. I really do. Oh, great water! <laughs> William, thank you so much for being on, man. Dude, thank you for having me. I uh, I was real nervous about coming on. I was, I was too. I didn't talk about, but I uh, I feel like everything I said today was was, was my great. truth, and I feel like what great. I spoke would help people find their truth, and it was, oh, it was, it was a great uh, time. It was a great time, and I hope, I hope you guys continue your own journey because <laughs> that's what we're doing. We're doing our own thing. And like I said, I'm going to bust my ass to the city. It's good. If that means dying for it, whatever. You know I mean it. You know I mean it. Love it. You know I fucking mean it, man. This is my city. We'll see y'all next time, though. Episode 60, whatever. <laughs> I don't even remember because I'm on this shit. But thank you guys so much. Support. No, even support the podcast. Yeah, support those fucking people you see on the streets. Really. So those are the people who need it. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck the people who you see around you. <laughs> there you go. Support them. Be a good guy. For real. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time, though.